Coming up, Franklin Graham shares the true cost of Christmas. There is a price to be paid. A struggle to find hope takes its toll. It was messy. It was hard. It was anything but easy for me. Christ came at a great cost to save them from their sins. Being bought with a price leads to sharing the priceless. I did tell God, you know, when I was incarcerated, I would like to do for you out here in the world what you've done for me in there. But living out faith has a cost of its own. Modern culture is increasingly hostile toward Christianity. Stop speaking wickedness! Our country is in trouble. And the question people have is, Franklin, what can I do? Have you ever thought about the, the cost of Christmas? Well, I guess all of us have to some degree, especially January and February when the credit card statements come in, but there is a, a cost. And when you think about the first Christmas, think about uh, the cost, God sending his son from heaven to this earth where the Lord Jesus Christ gave up his throne in heaven to come into this earth to, to be a child born of a virgin to be raised in a family in Nazareth, the cost, the price of that. And then you think about the cost just to the mother, to Mary, the pain, the suffering that she went through to bring the child into the world. When you think of the first Christmas and you think of what Jesus gave up, uh, he came from heaven and he came to this earth and he came into poverty. And he had a very difficult life, very difficult struggle. And the Bible says that he was despised and rejected. Now think about that. Uh, he wasn't a person where everybody came and patted him on the back. He, he was despised and he was rejected by men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. So our Lord Jesus, when he came from heaven to this earth, uh, there was a price, a big price. But God gave his son willingly, sent him to this earth on a rescue mission. Jesus created all things and possessed all power and authority in heaven. And if you had all power and authority, how would you use it? You know, the scripture says in Philippians uh, chapter two, verse seven and eight, he made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in the appearance of a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death at the cross. This Christmas, consider God's great love shown by the great price he paid to redeem you. And I want you to see a story of how Christ's great sacrifice brought hope to a hopeless situation. Christmas was not anything I ever looked forward to because it represented everything I didn't have. I didn't have joy, I didn't have family. So it was really a, a holiday that I just wanted to get over. I had a fear of getting close to people because I knew that if you saw me for who I was, you wouldn't accept me, you wouldn't like me. I believed in God, but I didn't, I didn't know a personal relationship was possible. Very early on, I had a feeling that I wasn't fitting in. I didn't know what was missing in my life, so I sought the best jobs. I went after the relationships. I would use alcohol, I would use food, I would use drugs. I used whatever I could to dull the pain. I didn't want to feel. I was running from me. I was alone. I had reached a bottom. I didn't know where else to go. I was desperately wanting connection. I had no idea how to go about it. There was a turning point in my life. I had 
this sense that something was calling me. I didn't know what that meant at the time, but I knew that I was feeling very vulnerable. So a, as I began the tour, I was hearing things I had never heard before. We believe that there are many people here tonight that have hungry hearts. You can find everything that you've been searching for in Christ. The words pierced my heart. It became personal that day. I'm accepting this as your word by faith. You're away from God. You're the one lost sheep. And he's looking for you tonight. It was so clear. As the invitation was given at the end, I knew this was my opportunity to change, to lay the past down, to walk forward, and to say yes. I accepted Christ on that day. What I found was this amazing family. They would love on me, they would put their arms around me, I would cry. I learned how to become a friend. They taught me how to live, they taught me what to do next. It was amazing. My favorite things about Christmas is serving at the Billy Graham Library. It's a month-long celebration that inspires people. A time that I just couldn't wait to get over is now full of life and celebration and family, what I have always wanted in my life. To not have that emptiness inside and know that I am a loving child of God, that He knows me personally and I know Him personally. That is absolutely what I have been searching for my entire life. Every day at the library, the gospel is changing lives. You see, the library is not just a library. What it is, it's, it's an ongoing crusade. People come from miles around to visit the Billy Graham Library at Christmas. It's not about Billy Graham, but it's about the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, who came out of heaven to this earth to take our sins. Every day, people are coming to faith in Christ. You know, you can be a partner with us at the Billy Graham Library. We need your prayers, but we also need your financial support. You see, we don't charge anything for a visit to the library. We want it to be free for everyone, but we do have costs to keep the library open and functioning every day with the people that are there to proclaim the gospel, share the gospel. We need your help, so please be a part of this. It's a great opportunity for you to be involved as a partner with the Billy Graham Library. Support the ongoing work of the Billy Graham Library with your prayers and financial help. Visit BillyGraham.tv and click Give or call 877-567-8989. As a thank you for your support, we'll send you a copy of The Jesus Code, a devotional book by O.S. Hawkins. During this season of generosity, partner with us as we continue to share the good news of the gospel. Call 877-567-8989 or go to BillyGraham.tv. Coming up, one man's journey from the penitentiary to the platform and how he's encouraging others to share the gospel. I'm very nervous. Are they gonna see the vision? Now I'm doing think it could come from someone like me. And later, Franklin Graham calls on Christians to face the cost of following Christ by battling for the soul of America. Well, I'm here today to say I'm not going without a fight. There's a place nearby where traditions live on. Carriage rides, singing the Christmas carols, hot chocolate. A place where Christmas is still about a miracle. Sing Jesus and your angels. Enjoy Christmas at the Billy Graham Library and retrace the steps of a farm boy who became a worldwide ambassador of God's love. It's not about Billy Graham. It's about the message of Christ. Celebrate Christmas as it was meant to be at the Billy Graham Library. One purpose motivates this preacher to travel to the far reaches of the globe. He gave his life and shed his blood for you and for me. The purpose, the simple message of salvation through Jesus Christ. We are the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. And our mission 
is to do everything we can to reach each life with the good news of Jesus Christ. When we remember Christmas and the price that was paid for our salvation, uh, we've got a great opportunity to share this wonderful gift with others. That's our family, our friends, our neighbors. And you know what? All of us have a responsibility to share this wonderful story with everyone. You know, Christmas is about love. It's about God's love, God sending His Son. And the Bible says that Christ's love compels us because we're convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. Christ came for a reason at Christmas. He was born in a manger, but He died on a cross. He shed His blood on that cross for each and every one. When we remember the cost that Christ paid, we should remember that we have a responsibility to share this wonderful gift that God loves us and that Christ died for our sins. And then we can share this gift with our friends and our family and neighbors. It's the greatest gift of all. So please share with your friends and family this year. The only way for salvation is through Christ. It's an urgent time. It's a very necessary time, and we need a response from everybody. Good afternoon, live here from AM 1240 and WKDK. It's Terrence from My Hope with Billy Graham with us today. With the connection with My Hope, that's a national initiative to help sharing people with the gospel of Jesus Christ and to know that the rest of the community have an opportunity to come to a saving grace and to partner with My Hope. I mean, it's, it's priceless. My Hope has worked all over the world. Since 2013, My Hope has been used in homes, prisons, county jails, theaters, churches. We're gonna be showing the new video tonight, right here on the streets, right where the people are. We're heading are. to the Yamhill County Jail and show the latest DVD We've been happened. inviting people at school um, just to come and have them hear the gospel. I'm headed to a Dallas high school football team to tell them about Jesus. We're a fire department. I think it'll make a huge impact. We're gonna show the message here. I just hope you'll open up your heart. Seeing um, my hope and how it's been used in the past, I know it could be effective here. Tonight is a pastor presentation for My Hope. It's an opportunity to embrace My Hope as an outreach program to help evangelize the community. So listeners out there, everybody who wants to make a difference, come out tonight. Absolutely. I'm very nervous. Some of the pastors are gonna be questioning it. Are they gonna see the vision? Um, do they think it could come from someone like me because that's my incarceration? That has me on edge a little bit. This is where I grew up at. This is 6A. This is me and my mom, single, parent home. My stepdad introduced me to crack cocaine, and from there, I used in the community probably the next two to three years. Eventually was sent to federal prison for selling drugs and spent 12 years there. My hope is a great opportunity for my community because it's an urgent time. People are challenged from every angle of life, and my hope is going to give the opportunity for people to receive salvation and the church an opportunity to reach those people that need salvation. Tonight I'm presenting my hope to pastors and leaders in the community to help them equip the churches to actually get out into the community and help evangelize. This year's My Hope production is Decisions, and um, it comes right after the Decision America tour. You're gonna see testimonies of people who decided that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. I wanna welcome everybody. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for the opportunity to present My Hope. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of forgiveness. He loves you. Think about all the people who have watched my whole program over the years, and so many people have received salvation because of it. There must be a decision here and now in this life. There's no greater joy 
than to know that somebody else has been secured their soul for eternity. This is probably the best decision I have made. I'm leaving here, new man, new man, new man, new man. Tonight, we're asking those leaders to respond. You, and he wants to forgive you. But the only way that can happen is you have to come to him by Everything's faith. at stake. If churches are not doing outreach, it's not going to happen. You think you want to use this in your community, in your church, would you just raise your hand for me? I'm excited. I'm going I'm to get involved. This program is what we need for young and the old. I think that this is something that would be a very positive way to reach people. Listen, I've been saved for 25 years and I came to tears. So it, it's a, a very impactful movie and, and it's going to work. Tonight was just a starting point in this community. Those people who saw the presentation have already committed to implement the program. I think it's going to spread like wildfire. You can take my hope and you can use this in your own home, you can use it in your business, wherever you are, you could just share it with a friend. Invite someone who doesn't know Jesus Christ, who you've been praying for, and invite them to watch that. And as they watch, you pray. Pray that the Holy Spirit of God would begin to work and speak to their hearts. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for your prayers, your financial support. Uh, we want to continue to do this every year, the My Hope Project, so thank you. Partner with us in this nationwide outreach that continues to change so many lives. Visit billygram.tv and click Give or call 877-567-8989. Please share the hope of Christ this Christmas. There's a sense of helplessness because we don't feel like we could change anything. The truths and freedoms that Christ died for are under attack in America. How should believers respond? It's time that we quit being afraid. It's time that we take a stand for God's truth. Next. on the whole country, state by state. We'll saturate it. Let's light a fire that will go from one end of this earth to the other. We are to wait for the coming of Christ with patience. patience, patience, patience. We are to watch with anticipation. The scripture says Christ is coming when you're least expecting him coming as a thief. He said, be prepared, get ready. Prepare to meet thy God. Are you prepared? Jesus said, if any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself daily and follow me. There is a price. Jesus is saying, there is a price to follow him. Today in this country, you can be scorned, people will mock you, make fun of you, and there'll even be people who will come after you and want to try to put you out of business or whatever they can do. It's just a fact of life, but it's a time for us to take a stand. We shouldn't be surprised at the cost or the price for following Christ and the hatred that can follow. You see, Jesus warned us in the scriptures. Jesus said in John 15, he said, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. There is a price, no question. We know that there will be persecution. We know there'll be difficulties. There's gonna be struggles. Jesus struggled and he struggled for your salvation when he died on that cross. He expects us to take a stand. So will you do that? Take a stand, a bold stand for the Lord Jesus Christ this Christmas. In the past year and a half, I have seen more moral decay in our society than I have in my lifetime. 
Several state legislatures have passed controversial religious freedom laws. One school faces a stiff penalty over prayer in general assemblies. The gray is dissolving and the dark is getting darker. Franklin Graham is going to 50 states to hold prayer rallies and encourage Christians to vote. She's calling this the Decision America Tour. All right, who wants corner one? You're there to kind of welcome. You're the welcome crew. To just come alongside Franklin Graham and his organization to just pray for our nation, that's pretty important, I would say. Franklin thought that 2016 would be a pivotal year. The Decision America Tour was an opportunity to draw the church out to pray but also to be actively engaged in the public sphere. This is something that has been building over the last couple of years in my heart and mind that something needs to be done. I just look at the country and realize that my grandchildren are not gonna have the same opportunities that I had. The times we live in are crucial right now. Our country is in trouble. It's in big time trouble. And no political party is going to be able to turn this around. My only hope is in Almighty God and His Son, Jesus Christ. Our moral walls and gates of a nation are down, and our politicians are more concerned about political correctness than about God's truth and His righteousness. Well, I'm here today to say I'm not going without a fight. There is a bus tour rolling through our country aimed at getting Christian voters to the polls. In Franklin Graham's word, it's a campaign for God. We've got an opportunity to make a difference in this country. There was no room left for anyone on the state capitol steps. It's amazing that people are showing up even on a work day. Let's start a movement across this country to turn this nation back to God. 7,000 people gathered out here at the State House for today's event, all to hear Franklin Graham deliver a message of faith. The only hope for this country is Almighty God. And the greatest thing that we can do here today is to pray. The Decision America Tour was a wonderful opportunity to gather believers to pray, but it was also a call to Christians to engage in a modern culture that is increasingly hostile toward Christianity. We should welcome opposition. Now that's a hard thing to do. I mean, it's easy to say, but it's a hard thing to do. Jesus said, uh, if they hate you, they hated me first. So it shouldn't surprise us. We're on the verge as Christians of losing this nation. And the question people have is, Franklin, what can I do? There's a sense of helplessness because we don't feel like we could change anything. I think all of us have a tendency to feel helpless in the sense that what can one person do? What can we do? Well, vote. Vote for candidates that stand for biblical truth and biblical principles and who are willing to live them. My father said in 1976, he said, I'd like to challenge every deeply committed American who's qualified to think about running for political office. He said, I don't believe that we as Christians should withdraw. It's time for the church to be heard. Our founding fathers never intended us to leave our faith out here on the steps when they go into that Capitol building. We're to take our faith wherever we go in life and we're to live it. It was like the Lord whispered to me and said, you need to get back in the game. I felt like he was tugging at my heart, telling me that I needed to consider running for the school board. The message was clear, get involved. It's time that we quit being afraid. We're not just to take our light and hide it under a bushel. We're to set it up so for the whole world to see it. Franklin came today with a torch, lit us on fire, and said, okay, now let's go and let's burn for our city. We can't help but be excited. We can't help but raise the flag. We can't help but shout hallelujah all day long. I'm stoked. Go home and vote. Run for office. Let's take this nation back. It was gratifying to see people respond to Franklin's call to be actively engaged in our culture. But it was also a tremendous opportunity to share the gospel. 
Anytime you have a crowd of people, I can guarantee you, there's gonna be somebody in that crowd that doesn't know Jesus Christ. And so every time I'm there at the microphone, I wanna give the gospel. I want to take just a moment right here on the Capitol steps to let you know that God loves you, okay? If you don't remember anything else, remember this, God loves you. And the Bible says that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And Jesus Christ hung on that cross and He died on that cross and He shed His blood on that cross for you and me. And on the third day, God raised His Son to life. He's alive, He's right here in your capital today, and He'll change your life, He'll forgive you, He'll cleanse you, He'll set you free from the power of sin in your life if you're willing to invite Him into your heart. And if you've never done that, I want you to just simply pray this prayer with me right now, wherever you are. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. 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 Forgive me. I want to invite him to come into my heart. Well, how he was praying, his brother came over me. It was like he was talking to me. I began to pray with him to renew my commitment with Jesus. People who were coming to the Capitol Steps lost in sin were getting saved. And that gives all of our team great joy. It felt like a cinder block was kicked out from my chest. It felt like I could fly. I'm free. Free. To God be the glory. Thank you. The Decision America Tour is over. Our elections are behind us, but the need for prayer is not through. We need to continue to pray for the United States of America, for our leaders at every level. And we need Christians to get engaged in the political process. But you see, there is a great cost. We can't back down, we can't surrender, we can't back up. Let's pray that God will use our lives to have an impact on our nation for future generations. The Billy Graham Evangelistic Association is all about taking the gospel, this good news that God loves sinners to the end of the earth, that Christ died for our sins, that He rose from the grave, He's alive, and He can come into each and every heart that is willing to trust Him by faith. And we're gonna to continue to do this as long as God gives us the health and strength. America needs prayer, America needs God, and we have turned our back on Him. So please, pray with us. We need your help and we need your prayers. Thank you. Reach America with the good news. Stand with Franklin Graham as he takes the gospel to key cities across the country next year. Your prayers and financial support are crucial. Visit BillyGraham.tv and click Give or call 877-567-8989. As a special thank you, we'll send you O.S. Hawkins' devotional book, The Jesus Code. We need your prayers and financial support. Call now or go to BillyGraham.tv. I want to wish each and every one of you a very Merry Christmas.